Welcome to Storytime with Mrs. Cole. We're going to pick up today just where we left off last time in our Adventures of Peter Cottontail. Chapter 11. Chapter 11. Shadow the Weasel Gets Lost. All the Green Meadows had heard how Peter had frightened Reddy Fox with an old straw hat and everywhere that Reddy went, someone was sure to shout after him, Reddy Fox is fine to see, he's brave as brave can be. Till he meets an old straw hat, then he won't know where he's at. Then Reddy would lose his temper and chase his tormentors. Most of all, he wanted to catch Peter Rabbit. He lay in wait for Peter in fence corners and behind bushes and trees, but somehow Peter always knew that Reddy was there. In the old briar patch, Peter was safe. Reddy had tried to follow him there, but he had found that it was of no use at all. Peter's paths were so narrow and the brambles tore Reddy's clothes and scratched him so that he had to give up. Reddy was thinking of this one day as he sat on his doorstep, scowling over the briar patch. And then, all of a sudden, he thought of Shadow the weasel. Shadow is so slim that he can go almost anywhere that anyone else can, and he is so fierce that nearly all of the little meadow people are terribly afraid of him. Reddy smiled. It was a mean, wicked, crafty smile. Then he hopped up and hurried to find Shadow the weasel and tell him his plan. Shadow listened, and then he too began to smile. It's easy, Reddy Fox, the easiest thing in the world. We'll get Peter Rabbit just as sure as fat hens are good eating, he said, as they started for the old briar patch. Reddy's plan was very simple. Shadow the weasel was to follow Peter Rabbit along Peter's narrow paths and drive Peter out of the old briar patch onto the green meadows, where Fox would surely catch him. So Reddy Fox sat down and waited while Shadow started into the old briar patch. Peter Rabbit heard him coming, and, of course, Peter began to run. Now, when Peter first made his home in the old briar patch, he had foreseen that someday Shadow the Weasel might come to hunt him there. So Peter had made dozens and dozens of little paths twisting and turning and crossing and recrossing in the most puzzling way. Of course, Peter himself knew every twist and turn of every one of them, but Shadow had got, not gotten very far before he was all mixed up. He kept his sharp little nose to the ground to smell Peter's footsteps, but Peter kept crisscrossing his own track so often that pretty soon Shadow could not tell which path Peter had taken. Peter led him farther and farther into the middle of the old briar patch. Right there, Shadow came to a great big puddle of water. Peter had jumped clear across it, for you know Peter's legs are long and meant for jumping. Now, Shadow hates to get his feet wet. And when he reached the puddle, he stopped. He glared with fierce little red eyes across at Peter Rabbit, sitting on the other side. Then he started around the edge. Peter waited until Shadow was almost around, and then he jumped back across the puddle. There was nothing for Shadow to do but to go back around, which of course he did. Of course, Peter just did the same thing over again, all the time laughing in his sleeve, for Shadow the Weasel was growing angrier and angrier. Finally, he grew so angry that he tried to jump the puddle himself and he fell in with a great splash. When Shadow did crawl out, wet and muddy, Peter had disappeared, and Shadow couldn't tell which path he had taken. Worse still, he didn't know which path to take himself to get out. He tried one after another, but after a little while, he would find himself back at the puddle in the middle of the old briar patch. Shadow the Weasel was lost. Yes, sir, Shadow the Weasel was lost in the old briar patch. Outside, Reddy Fox waited and watched, but no frightened Peter Rabbit came jumping out as he expected. What could it mean? After a long, long time, he saw someone very muddy and very wet and very tired crawl out of one of Peter Rabbit's paths. It was Shadow the Weasel. Reddy took one look at him and then he hurried away. He didn't want to hear what Shadow the Weasel would say. And as he hurried across the green meadows, he heard Peter Rabbit's voice from the middle of the old briar patch. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. 
shouted Peter Rabbit. Reddy Fox ground his teeth. Chapter 12. The Plot of Two Scamps Sammy Jay, looking around for mischief, found Reddy Fox sitting on his doorstep with his chin in both hands, looking as if he hadn't a friend in the world. What are you doing? asked Sammy Jay. I'm just a studying, replied Reddy Fox. What are you studying? Perhaps I can help you, said Sammy Jay. Reddy Fox heaved a long sigh. I'm a studying how I can catch Peter Rabbit, he replied. Sammy Jay scratched his head thoughtfully. Reddy Fox still sat with his chin in his hands and thought and thought and thought. Sammy Jay sat on one foot and scratched and scratched and scratched his head with the other. And suddenly, Sammy looked up. I have it, he said. You remember the hollow log over by the old hickory tree? Reddy nodded his head. Well, I'll go down and invite Peter Rabbit to come over there and see the strangest thing in the world. You know what great curiosity Peter Rabbit has. Now you'll be hiding in the hollow log, and when you hear me say to Peter Rabbit, the strangest thing in the world is waiting for you over there, Peter, you spring out, and you'll have Peter. Reddy Fox brightened up. This plan certainly did look good to Reddy. Peter had fooled him so many times that he was almost in despair. He knew that if he had sent another invitation to Peter Rabbit, he would suspect right away that this meant mischief. But Peter wouldn't think that Sammy Jay was planning mischief because he knew that Sammy Jay is the greatest news teller of all the green forest. So Reddy Fox trotted off to the hollow log down by the big hickory tree and crept inside. Sammy Jay flew over to the briar patch to look for Peter Rabbit. He found him sitting under a big bramble bush. Good morning, Peter Rabbit, said Sammy Jay with the finest manner. Peter looked at Sammy Jay sharply as he remembered his greeting. Sammy Jay wasn't in the habit of being so polite to Peter, and Peter began to study just what it could mean. I saw the strangest thing in the world this morning, said Sammy Jay. Peter pricked up his ears. In spite of himself, he began to grow curious. What was it, Sammy Jay? he asked. Sammy looked very mysterious. I don't rightly know what it is, he replied, but I can show it to you if you want to see it for yourself, Peter Rabbit. Of course, Peter wanted to see it, so he started out across the green meadows with Sammy Jay. Now, the further he went, the more time he had to think. And by the time he had nearly reached the old hickory tree, Peter began to suspect a trick. Sammy Jay motioned to Peter to approach very carefully. It's right over there, in that hollow log, he whispered. You go peep in, and you'll see it, said Sammy. Then Sammy prepared to give the signal to Reddy Fox. Peter hopped a couple steps nearer, and then he sat up very straight and gazed at the hollow log. Somehow he just didn't like the looks of it. He didn't know why, but he just didn't. Then along came one of Old Mother West's winds, Merry Little Breezes, dancing right past the hollow log and up to Peter Rabbit, and with him brought a funny smell. Peter's little wobbly nose wrinkled. That funny smell certainly reminded Peter of Reddy Fox. He wrinkled his nose again, and then suddenly he whirled about. Excuse me, Sammy Jay, he exclaimed. I just remembered something very important. And before J Sammy Jay could open his mouth, Peter had started like a brown streak for the old briar patch. Chapter 13. Reddy Fox Comes to Life. Reddy Fox lay on the side hill. Bobby Coon found him there, and when Bobby Coon spoke to him, Reddy made no reply. Bobby went over and looked at him. Reddy's eyes were closed. Bobby grinned to himself, and then he tiptoed a little nearer and shouted, Boo! right in one of Reddy's little black ears. Still, Reddy did not move. Bobby Coon's face grew sober. He poked Reddy with his foot, but still... Reddy did not move. Then he pulled Reddy's tail, and still Reddy did not move. It must be that Reddy Fox is dead, thought Bobby Coon, and he hurried away to tell the news. There was a great excitement on the green meadow and in the green forest when the little people heard that Reddy Fox was dead. 
Of course, everyone wanted to see Reddy, and soon there was a procession of all the little meadow and forest people hurrying across the green meadows to the hillside where Reddy Fox lay. Jimmy Skunk, Johnny Chuck, Billy Mink, Little Joe Otter, Uncle Billy Possum, Danny Meadow Mouse, Spotty the Turtle, Old Mr. Toad, Grandfather Frog, Jerry Muskrat, Sammy Jay, Blackie the Crow, Happy Jack Squirrel, Striped Chipmunk, Jumper the Hare, Prickly Porky, all were there. They formed a big circle around Reddy Fox. Then they began to talk about Reddy. Some told of good things that Reddy had done and what a fine gentleman he was. Others told of the mean things that Reddy had done and how glad they were there that they no longer had to watch out for him. It was surprising the number of bad things that were said, but then they felt safe in saying them. For was not Reddy lying right there before them, stone dead? Now Peter Rabbit had not heard the news until late in the day, and when he did hear it, he started as fast as his long legs could take him to the, have a last look at Reddy. Halfway there, he suddenly stopped and scratched one of his long ears. Peter was thinking, it was mighty funny that Reddy Fox should have died without anyone having heard that he was sick. Peter started on again, but this time he did not hurry. Presently he cut a long twig, which he carried along with him. When he reached the circle around Reddy Fox, he stole up behind Prickly Porky the porcupine and whispered in his ear. Prickly Porky took the long twig which Peter handed him, while Peter went off a little distance and climbed up an old stump where he could see. Prickly Porky reached over and tickled one of Reddy's black ears. For a minute, nothing happened. Then the black ear twitched. Prickly Porky tickled the end of Reddy's little black nose. Then he tickled it again. And what do you think happened? Why, Reddy Fox sneezed. My, my, my! How that circle around Reddy Fox did disappear. All the little people were afraid of Reddy Fox scampered away as fast as they could run, while all the other little people, who were not afraid of Reddy Fox, began to laugh. And the one who laughed the loudest of all was Peter Rabbit, as he started back for the old briar patch. Of course, Reddy Fox knew then that it was of no use at all to pretend that he was dead. So he sprang to his feet and started after Peter Rabbit at his top speed. But when he reached the old briar patch, Peter was safe inside, and Reddy could hear him laughing as if he would split his sides. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, shouted Peter Rabbit. Chapter 14. Peter Rabbit in a Tight Place Hop along, skip along, the sun is shining bright. Hum a song, sing a song, my heart is always light. It is true, Peter Rabbit always is light-hearted. For days and days, Reddy Fox had been trying to ca catch Peter, and Peter had kept his wits very sharp indeed in order to keep out of Reddy Fox's way. Still, it didn't seem to worry Peter much. Just now, he was hopping and skipping down the lone little path without a care in the world. Presently, Peter found a nice shady spot close to a big rock. Underneath one edge of the rock was a place just big enough for Peter to crawl in. It was just the place for a nap. Peter was beginning to feel sleepy, so he crawled in there and soon was fast asleep. By and by, Peter began to dream. He dreamed that he had gone for a long walk, way, way off from the safe old briar patch, and that out from behind a big bush had sprung Reddy Fox. Just as Reddy's teeth were about to close on Peter, Peter woke up. It was such a relief to find that he was really snug and safe under a big rock that he almost shouted out loud, but he didn't. And a minute later, oh, he was so glad that he hadn't, for he heard a voice that seemed as if it was right in his ear. It was the voice of Reddy Fox. Yes, sir, it was the voice of Reddy Fox. Peter hardly dared to breathe. And you may be sure that he did not even make the smallest sound, for Reddy Fox was sitting on the very rock under which Peter was resting. Reddy Fox was talking to Blackie the Crow. Peter listened with all his might, for what do you think Reddy Fox was saying? 
Why, he was telling Blackie the crow of a new plan to catch Peter Rabbit and was asking Blackie to help him. Peter had never been so frightened in his life, for here was Reddy Fox so close to him that Peter could have reached out and touched one of Reddy's legs as he kicked his heels over the edge of the big rock. By and by, Blackie the crow spoke. I saw Peter Rabbit coming down this way early this morning, said Blackie, and I don't think he's ever gone home. Why don't you go over and hide near the old briar patch and catch Peter when he comes back? I will watch out, and if I see Peter, I will tell him that you have gone hunting for your breakfast way over beyond the big hill. Then he will not be on the watch. The very thing, exclaimed Reddy Fox, and if I catch him, I will surely do the same for you, Blackie. I believe that I will go right away. Then the two rascals planned and chuckled as they thought that they would outwit Peter Rabbit. I'm getting hungry said Reddy Fox, as he arose and stretched. I wonder if there's a field mouse hiding under this old rock. I believe I'll look and see. Peter's heart almost stood still as he heard Reddy Fox slide down off the rock. He wiggled himself still further back underneath the rock and held his breath. Just then, Blackie the Crow gave a sharp, Caw! 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 That meant that Blackie saw something. And almost at once, Peter heard the sound that sometimes fills his heart with fear, but which now filled it with great joy. It was the voice of Bowser the Hound. Reddy Fox heard it too, and he didn't stop to look under that big rock. A little later, Peter very cautiously crawled out of his resting place and climbed up to where he could see the green meadows. Way over on the far side, he could see Reddy Fox running at top speed, and behind him was Bowser the Hound. My, but that was a tight place, said Peter Rabbit as he stretched himself. Chapter 15 Johnny Chuck Helps Peter Johnny Chuck had watched Reddy Fox try to fool and catch Peter Rabbit, and sometimes Johnny had been very much afraid that Reddy would succeed. But Peter had been too smart for Reddy each time, and Johnny had laughed with the other little people of the Green Meadow whenever the Merry Little Breezes had brought a new story of how Peter had outwitted Reddy. Peter will have to watch out sharper than ever now, for Granny Fox is almost well, and she is very angry because Reddy could not catch Peter Rabbit for her when she was ill. She says that she's going to show that silly old Reddy how to do it, and do it quickly said Jimmy Skunk, and then he stopped to chat with Johnny Chuck one fine morning. Johnny had just been laughing very hard over one of Peter Rabbit's tricks, but now his face grew very sober, very sober indeed. It won't do to let Granny Fox catch Peter. It won't do at all. We must all turn in and help Peter, said Johnny. Why, what would the green meadows and the green forest be with no Peter Rabbit? he added. Late that afternoon, Johnny Chuck happened to find Peter Rabbit taking a nap. Yes, sir, Peter Rabbit actually gone to sleep under the dear old briar patch. At first, Johnny thought that he would awaken him and tell him that Reddy Fox was hunting right near. But just then, Johnny's bright eyes saw something that made him chuckle. It was the home of some hot-tempered friends of his, a beautiful home made of what looked like gray paper. It was fastened to a bush just above a little patch leading to the very spot where Peter lay fast asleep. Johnny chuckled again and then he hurried off. He sat down on the top of the little hill. Pretty soon Reddy Fox came along through the hollow below. Hello Reddy Fox, do you want to know how you can catch Peter Rabbit? asked Johnny. Reddy looked up. He didn't know just what to say. He knew that Johnny Chuck and Peter had always been the very best of friends. Still, friends fall out sometimes, and perhaps Johnny and Peter had. Reddy decided that he would be polite. I certainly do, Johnny Chuck, he replied. Can you tell me how to do it? Yes, said Johnny. Peter is fast asleep over yonder behind the little bunch of huckleberry bushes. There is a little path through them. All you have to do is hurry up the little path as fast as you can and as still as you can. 
Reddy Fox waited to hear no more. His eyes glistened as they started off at top speed up the little path. Just as Johnny had expected, Reddy went in such a hurry that he didn't use his eyes for anything but signs of Peter Rabbit. Bang! Reddy ran head first into the paper house of Johnny Chuck's hot-tempered friends. In fact, he smashed the whole side in. Out poured old Mrs. Hornet and all her family, and they had their little needles with them. Reddy forgot all about Peter Rabbit. He yelled at the top of his lungs and started for home, slapping at old Mrs. Hornet, whomever he could hit, and stopping every few minutes to roll over and roll over. Of course, when he yelled, Peter Rabbit awoke and sat up to see what all the fuss was about. He saw Reddy running, as if his life depended on it. Over in the little hill, he saw Johnny Chuck laughing, so hard that tears ran down his face. Then, Peter began to laugh too, and ran over to ask Johnny Chuck to tell him all about it. Don't forget to tune in next time, Chapter 16. See you soon!